Okay. Um, there are still people coming fast and furiously through the door, and uh, but let's get started because we have a whole lot to talk about um, uh, on this topic. Uh, and thanks for joining us. Uh, first of all, let me pay respects to uh, some of you, most of you probably being uh, so close to the end of your fiscal year. Uh, you flatter us by being here today, unless, of course, you're so desperate for every last gift that you want to uh, launch your own Venmo strategy this afternoon. Uh, on the basis of this presentation, and that's okay uh, too. Um, but I know it's a, it's a boy. It's been a busier than ever year, right? And uh, but best of luck to everybody for their year-end fundraising. And um, you flatter us by being here. You know, I, I, John, I had a flurry of these um, FaceTime chats, <laughs> FaceTime, uh, Zoom chats, Zoom chats, um, back in May, and then was trying to be respectful of the fact that people had a lot of other things on their plate with year-end fundraising. But I, this topic to me was too good to resist uh, to have a chat about. And so um, uh, I'm happy that uh, we seem to have struck a note with people uh, interested in talking about it. Um, just a couple of quick uh, bits of information. This is my uh, garden. I, I live in Chicago. If you know Chicago, I'm uh, halfway between Wrigley Field and downtown. And uh, Probably like you, I've been looking for things to do over the last couple of months and have gotten to things that I might have otherwise neglected. You can see the, the garden on my roof has gotten way out of hand because it's never gotten this much attention uh, ever before. And uh, this is related to this chat, John, because on my list of things to figure out when I had the spare time to do it was what are the right answers about Venmo, what are the right ways we should be thinking about Venmo, and um, if there's ways to blend it in to the way we're fundraising, I think uh, I'm all ears in knowing uh, what are the right answers to all those questions. So um, in a way, ironically, I'm not sure that this discussion happens if we're not in the middle of the pandemic that we're in, because we'd all be running around trying to accomplish this, that, and the other thing, certainly me anyway. Well, and, and not working on gardens either. How, how's your garden? Never my, my garden, actually, we we have <laughs> plucked our first tomatoes. Thank you very much. Um, well done. And it's probably going to be a, a good year for tomatoes on the Berninsky uh, roof, too. Uh, okay, just a couple of ground rules here um, that I have perfected. Uh, really, John, going back to when we were doing the Meeting of the Minds online uh, back in March. Um, but uh, that's sort of the agenda that we're following along the left-hand column there. Um, I can already guess what a lot of the questions are going to be uh, from folks in this session. And the only sympathy we ask is that you, we've kind of set up a, a path of a discussion here um, about how you find out who the donor is on your database and the legalities of all this uh, and all that stuff. And, but, um, let us follow through our progression here, and then either we can ask, answer as many questions as we know the answers to at the end, um, or we can figure it out subsequently. Uh, I um, am going to try and keep us on topic. I've become a big fan of the chat uh, function, um, both for uh, asking questions, but also answering questions, too. If, if I could, I might suggest that you use the chat as your way of engaging with the group while John and I are droning on about something. So ask questions in the chat, also offer answers in the chat too, if you'd like. That's become kind of a parallel resource for me in, in addition to the recording uh, of today. Um, speaking of the recording, I think I've got the record button on. And it's so on. let's, <laughs> let's uh, that wasn't always an assumption you could make, but let's assume we'll have a recording of this subsequently for anybody who uh, wants to review some of the things that uh, we talk about. Um, uh, and you'll get a, a copy of all the chat comments as well. Um, John, anything else I'm forgetting from a housekeeping? No, I, no I'll, I'll, keep, I'll keep my eye on the chats. And, and if, uh, if, I don't, if I don't recognize somebody's question immediately, it may be because I know that you will be giving the first line in a few minutes. So. There's exactly one commercial announcement in this, only because John and I have a, another online conference coming up uh, the first week of August, uh, the uh, Midwest Meeting of the Minds, which geographically could be anywhere at this point, um, is uh, August 5th, 6th, and 7th. We have pivoted from being on location in Chicago uh, to being entirely on Zoom. John and I could not have been bigger guinea pigs for trying this with the West Coast Meeting of the Minds a couple months ago. Um, we've now learned that an online conference has almost 
no overhead. So we've reduced the cost to one registration per institution, uh, which enables anybody in your shop, uh, literally in your shop or, or virtually in your shop at the moment to join us. Uh, we've got at least 25 sessions, 195 bucks. What's not to like about these two faces? Um, and uh, and John, will be fun. <laughs> John will be fun to ride with you again. Uh, it's for looking that. forward to it. Okay, I think that's all the uh, housekeeping announcements. Let's um, jump into talking about uh, Venmo. John, I have to admit, for the first uh, couple of months that I even understood what Venmo was, I called it Virgo. Um, uh, somebody on Funlist the other day called it Venom. <laughs> so I think it's for some well, of us. You it's know, still... and I, 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 the funny story there is that the first time I learned about it was a couple, three years ago uh, uh, from my granddaughter. Um, and because th that was the only way that she could transfer money and that type of thing. So I Googled it and all of the Google responses came out as venom and apparently it was some kind of a dark society. So I'm, I'm glad to learn a little bit more about it. Yeah. Um, and so, you know, for those of you who still don't know what Venmo is before we get to all the um, sort of issues about whether or not to use Venmo. If Venmo is a peer-to-peer -peer fundraising platform. Venmo themselves or itself will continue to tell you today it's primarily about peer-to-peer -peer transfer of funds. Um, whether you're out with a group or when you used to go out as a group to the pizza parlor or pay the babysitter or uh, whatever, it, they will still insist this is primarily a peer-to-peer fundraising platform. And it's something to pay attention to. 52 million users as of uh, last year, representing $102 billion in payment transfers. I can tell you, um, if any of my, uh, my friends are listening from overseas, Monzo is now the UK equivalent to Venmo, if you didn't know. So I'm gonna, those terms I think are a little bit interchangeable uh, for this conversation. But um, it's tantalizing, isn't it, John, to, think about a donor who immediately decides they want to make a gift and the ability to immediately transfer that gift um, is something that'd be awfully nice to figure out as a, a receiving option. Yeah, how, to, how to bring it in. I mean, you, you, you want to make it easy for donors to give and you don't want to say no. You're absolutely right. Um, Venmo uh, has made some headlines a little bit over the last couple of years. You may remember this guy who held up a sign uh, at, in, at the ESPN desk at one of the live football games uh, back in the fall. Uh, with, my bush light supply needs replenishing and there's his Venmo address, this guy named Carson King. Um, I should say, uh, Mr. King got himself into a little bit of trouble subsequent to this for some tweets that were racially offensive. I'll just say it. So this is not an endorsement of him uh, as much as it's an endorsement of the idea and the creativity behind it. But if you don't remember this story, he he then raised $3 million because of everybody that was Venmoing him money to go get uh, more Bush beer, including the Anheuser-Busch company itself that said, we'll kick in a million dollars. And then ultimately even Venmo uh, itself said, we'll add another million dollars to this guy. John, we'll talk about this later. I think what this guy did is technically a violation of Venmo's own policy. I think you're right. <laughs> right. So you'll, you'll hear that theme a little bit uh, as we go. Well, and, about, and, and you'll find out how he could have made it within their policy if he had thought in advance. Yeah, and the University of Iowa Children's Hospital, which I think is the one that everybody turns and waves to the kids because it's right next door to the football stadium in Iowa, at the end of the first quarter, they were one of the big beneficiaries of this whole escapade. Um, and I think, you know, got a multi-million dollar gift out of it. I don't think they've uh, returned any money because this was a violation of Venmo policy. Um, but John and I are gonna hit that theme a, a, a bit as we go about what's Venmo policy um, and what's, enforced and what sort of uh, decisions you make about, um, you know, whether you adhere to the letter of the law uh, of all of that or not. And uh, John, this is a good place for us to inject a legal disclaimer that neither John nor I uh, are ever encouraging anybody to do anything illegal uh, when we um, tell you what's going on at other places. Well, uh, no, and, or... and we should further say that neither of us are lawyers <laughs> in, think in any way, shape, or form. So don't take anything that we have to say as, as legal advice. Please yeah. seek guidance from your own attorney. Hey, Bob, there is one question 
but I'm not sure that we are um, uh, going to address. If we do, then we can hold it. But the question is, uh, do we know how Venmo makes it money? Well, that's a good question. Um, and I think if you look on the Venmo website, uh, you can find that information. Uh, at the moment, there doesn't seem to be any cost to the donor or the any of our institutions. Um, somebody may know better than me if uh, that's not the case. And <laughs> this is also a good time to add that anything we say that's wrong or incomplete, feel free to chime in. Well, um, so that's not wrong, um, but but there is one there is one place where Venmo does make money. Uh, and for those of you, by the way. Um, Bob, quite a few people are asking if you want to launch a poll about how many of people on are, are using Venmo. Yeah, we don't have a poll set up. There will be no poll today. Okay, so there we go. So, so the, the one place where Venmo does make money, it has to do with, with fees that you don't see uh, or er, income that you don't see. As those of you who do use Venmo know, um, Venmo will authorize you to uh, receive your funds after they have been quote unquote given to you, but it's not the same day. Um, and, and therefore Venmo is actually holding onto those funds for a period of time. Okay. Uh, and that, so it's float is, is what they're earning is the income off of that billion dollars. And when you think about it, a billion dollars sitting in a, in a, even if it's one and a half percent, a billion dollars sitting in, uh, for a day is going to earn some money. And Venmo certainly reserves the right to change its fee structure uh, at any time once they've talked all of us into using it. So this is the caveat. I think as we sit here today, there's nothing prohibitive about using Venmo for, as a gift receiving idea, um, you know, legalities of it aside, which we'll come back to, but from a and then, and, then view, it, and we also heard from our friend Max, who we'll, talking, who we'll talk about later with Give Butter, who points out that they also charge a fee, Venmo charges a fee if a user links a credit card instead of a bank account. So we'll, uh, we'll, we'll get to that as well. Yeah, along with Max's fees. I'm just and, kidding. And Shania just also kidding. pointed that out. Thank you. Um, Okay, just uh, if you're wondering why, why, why are we making a deal about Venmo in the first place? To me, John, it always comes back to how, um, how much of an institutional priority it still is for total numbers of donors uh, each year, and, and then the good old alumni participation uh, metric too. So here's William and Mary uh, bragging about how they're number one among public universities in alumni participation. They're certainly not alone. Here's the University of Michigan bragging about how 94% of their donors were gifts of $5,000 or less. And you only have to go to Michael Bloomberg, whose total giving to Johns Hopkins uh, has now exceeded $1 billion. Um, it, but who also made a $5 first gift to Johns Hopkins way back in 1965, um, before the internet, <laughs> before me, <laughs> um, to appreciate sort of the idea that if, if people want to raise their hand, we should have a broad base for support, um, especially if a younger audience is transacting in different ways from their parents who wrote paper checks, you know, should we try to be present in that space? Um, but that's a whole other discussion, isn't it, about, you know, why are we making a big deal over relatively small gifts? It's because of that institutional priority and metric to have that base of support uh, more often than well, not. Well, and, 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 and it's also, you know, you don't, you don't want to take a donor off. Um, you know, you, you, to the extent that you can do it easily and reasonably, um, if a donor wants to make a gift, and, and we can go down gift acceptance policies and that type of thing, but if a donor wants to make a gift through some mechanism that you haven't accepted before, and it's not going to kill you financially or procedurally, why not? I mean, Bob, we were having these same conversations four, five, six years ago about text to give. Um, you know, it was the same kind of conversation. Should we? It's not big money. There was a cap on the amount. Uh, and as you and I were discussing uh, offline, we were having the exact same questions back in the 1990s about whether or not to accept American Express cards. 
Uh, or any credit card too. Or any credit card for that matter. <laughs> so, so yeah, why why not if if you can figure out a way? To... Um, I'll bet a lot of you have found this uh, page and this phrase. If you go looking for Venmo for nonprofits, uh, at one point they were running a beta test uh, to sort of come up with a solution. Uh, for nonprofits that wanted to collect donations. They kind of shut the door on that. I think Max will talk about this in a minute. And, um, and, and I've now waited, what, John, years for them to kind of revisit the subject? You know, about, um, three, about three, and, and I'll point out, Bob, that while, while you've been blabbering away, one, <laughs> one of our participants has asked the question, is anybody listening today in that trial or what were they in that trial if anyone chimes in i'll let you know yeah um because we'd be interested in that um perspective about what what you're enjoying on the other side of that fence right um but so i'm guessing for a lot of places john this may be where this conversation stopped in that well clearly they're uh, they don't want uh, nonprofits to to be uh on the conversation um but you know, I'm getting old, waiting for them to sort of revisit how they want to work with not-for-profits. And in the meantime, they're sort of coming up with other solutions for businesses and retailers and and other uh, entities that aren't individuals. So, um, but I went diving, and I've actually come up with what I think are five ways today that you can use Venmo uh, in your program. And we're going to walk through all of these. They, I, I think they get a little more complicated as and we let, go. Let's, let's again point out, Bob, five ways that you can do it legitimately. Well, the, the fifth one, it was questionable. But, uh, uh, I understand that. <laughs> and so we're going to walk through legally, I said legitimately. Um, if you don't know, PayPal actually owns Venmo at this point. So PayPal is an interesting party in this conversation too, and that they're trying to figure out how to integrate Venmo, how, you know, what sort of solutions they offer to companies and not-for-profits. And so that's percolating as a part of this. But Venmo is now a payment option in the PayPal gateway. And we'll talk about that in a, little, in a minute. Um, you can now also get officially approved as a business merchant on Venmo. There's a whole separate sort of application for that. Um, again, uh, that's more about designing your platform with Venmo integration uh, more than just somebody Venmoing your institution with an immediate gift. Uh, we'll talk to Max from Give Butter for a little bit. I, he seems to have been the one company who has navigated how to integrate Venmo as a payment option on their platform. We'll let him uh, speak to that. Then the last two are the most intriguing ones, how people are using individual Venmo accounts. If you didn't know, you can, you can actually get Venmo's permission to use an individual account to do fundraising. Um, and we'll talk about that. And the last but not least, uh, where I think a lot of us wind up landing right or wrong is just taking an individual account and, um, and using it uh, as a way to receive uh, gifts. We're gonna walk through all that. Uh, and so um, if your questions tend to be about using that Venmo individual account, which is most of the examples that we have to share in this chat, um, sit tight for a second until we get to uh, that uh, intrigue, right? Okay, John, here's the, the PayPal checkout right. screen. This I think is on a mobile phone. And um, so anybody who's using PayPal as their payment gateway, um, now you can see they've got this integration with Venmo. And if I click on Venmo, um, up comes another screen. You can see it's pre-populated with the account holder on your phone or presumably on your laptop or whatever. Um, so this isn't as easy as just pulling out, opening up the Venmo app and making a gift to your university. But um, again, this is where PayPal becomes important in this conversation. Well, and it becomes, it's also important that it's just not magic. You have to be set up to accept PayPal on your online giving site. And not all yeah. institutions have gone down that path. So if you want to accept Venmo as a payment mechanism, the first thing you need to do is to set up to accept PayPal. Yes. And, um, you know, again, I don't think this gets to what's attractive for a lot of us with Venmo, which is the immediacy of I want to make a gift. Boom. I've made a gift uh, and I did it through my Venmo app. So, but it can be done if, uh, 
If you want to um, add the PayPal uh, giving functionality, just know that that's got Venmo now folded into it. And that. So, and, and Bob, one of our one of our attendees has pointed out that in order to do that, you need a contract with Braintree, which uh, is PayPal's uh, payment processor. Yeah, and which um, which went to my next one. That if you go as a merchant uh, looking for Venmo integration, that that's the road they take you down. And, and, and I, I, I can't even really articulate what Braintree is, but I think it's the, the platform that lets you integrate this into your uh, retailing. <laughs> but so it may be synonymous with what I just explained with PayPal checkout. But um, anyway, more um, burdensome roads to go. To me, I still think you lose some of that immediate uh, making of a gift. That's what made Venmo attractive to all of us in the first place. Um, but those are out there. John, can you tell me what on earth Braintree is? I'll, I, well, it's a payment <laughs> processor. Okay. That's all I can tell you. I'm an annual giving idea guy. I lost them there. Okay. No, no, no you, you are. <laughs> it's okay, a division so of PayPal. Uh, acquired by PayPal in 2013, it provides clients with a merchant account and payment gateway. So this is so payment gateway. This is so lame that you're Googling trying to find answers. Yeah, that's to all I can do. <laughs> okay, so that's two right off the to check right Bob, off the do bat. Do you happen to know if uh, there are any fees to the nonprofit organization if it goes through PayPal? No idea whatsoever. Max is going to join us, and he'll probably say that there is. Um, okay, uh, I have to confess, I knew of Give Butter, but didn't know a whole lot about its functionality. I think, John, we should probably say we're not in cahoots with Give Butter. Uh, I'm not getting any kickback from Max uh, for involving him in this chat, but he does seem to have cornered the market in having a platform that integrates Venmo uh, as an option. Um, let's see, Max, are you out there? Can you turn on your microphone? Do I need yep. to do that for you? I'm here, Bob. Great. Um, I, we have to thank Max for joining us. I think after this, he's heading straight to a bachelor party on Cape Cod. So I appreciate his <laughs> fitting us into his schedule. Be sure you're a socially distant uh, bachelor party, Max. But how are yes. you? I'm well, yeah. Yeah, it will be. We had to go from 15 to just four uh, for the party. So it'll be, and it's fitting to talk about Venmo right before we head out. Um, <laughs> so yeah, just so thanks for having me. Max, just in my introduction, have I said anything wrong yet? No, I, I, I added that little bit about the fees in there, about the, how Venmo makes money. Um, PayPal is a processor, and, and as you guys mentioned, uh, owns Braintree. Braintree is a lot like Stripe, Authorize.net. Uh, it's a developer-friendly uh, way to uh, process payments in a lot of different ways, and they own Venmo. So everything sort of it goes Venmo, Braintree, PayPal in terms of the hierarchy, and you wouldn't need a relationship with Braintree most likely to do that on the development side, uh, working with Venmo. But yeah, I'm happy to dive in a little bit more on on kind of how we came into this uh, uh, whole whole space. And so basically, GiveButter was initially a crowdfunding platform uh, marketed and geared towards students. So we had a lot of market share with student orgs and clubs uh, that were raising money online. Um, and we actually got into the uh, Venmo beta. Uh, they had a merchant API about two to three years ago, um, which is different from the nonprofit beta. It's different from the business accounts. It's actually a programmatic API interface, uh, application programming interface to integrate uh, with Venmo, um, such that when people go to check out, they see Venmo as an option, and it can actually authorize their Venmo account, kick them back to give butter, and they can complete their donation. Um, and that's something that we, we had, and it, it was really successful when we worked with a lot of um, sort of more grassroots organizations, as you have alluded to right now, we might not have, be having a conversation like that. And it was always something cool that we offered. Uh, but now it's just becoming more and more popular um, on our site and, and with what we do. So I, I, I listed out a couple of benefits I can kind of walk through and how it's different. So, um, well, and Max, let me just ask, um, yeah. I said this before, tell me if I was right. You, you, you know, we had a nice chat the other day and, and you kind of got in the door with the ability to um, uh, integrate this with your platform before, um, before Venmo sort of had a change of mind and, and, just kind of stopped uh, adding yeah. anybody else, right? That's right. Yeah, it was it was interesting. They they had this. It was called their Merchant API, uh, Venmo Merchant API, 
And uh, we had access that was also in beta. They have, I guess this tendency of putting things in beta and then never releasing them out of beta. Um, but we were in it and then they closed off applicants. So they no longer accepting applicants for the merchant API. Uh, they, they had organized, like a lot of core commercial organizers like Levi's Jeans, um, you know, had an option on their site to have a pay with Venmo. It was similar for us, but we were in the fundraising space and no one else in the fundraising space was part of that initial beta. And we still have access. We still have that relationship with Venmo. We're still using that API, um, but it doesn't seem like they're allowing new applicants at this point. And we haven't seen it in any other fundraising platforms. So it's, it's sort of a, a, as you have the five ways to accept Venmo, we're sort of in a, in that sort of that unique, you could almost, almost put the merchant API there and, on the fundraising space, we're the only one that has access to that. And Max, one of the um, riddles that you solve, it seems to me, that I know people are going to ask about before we're done here, is how do, how do you match exactly who the donor is? Right. Well, coming through your platform, you already have all that information, and then you're jumping into Venmo to complete the transaction, right? Exactly. Uh, so, <laughs> it, it, yeah, if nothing else, one of the best benefits is the fact that you'll be able to collect any information that you want on the donor, uh, just like you would with any other payment method. You'll be able to send them a tax receipt immediately, an acknowledgement, um, and customize that. And that's all done through GiveButter. You don't actually need a Venmo account to use the API, which is one of the key differences. So you wouldn't actually need to have a relationship with Venmo. You don't need to work with Braintree. You, we are you effectively as the, the donor. Uh, no, sorry, you as the organization okay. don't need a Venmo account. So like a lot, a lot of the other solutions, you would need a PayPal or Braintree relationship and or a Venmo account to actually withdraw that money, like the, the sort of next two options we'll talk about, you would need an account on Venmo, uh, an individual account to withdraw that, those funds to a bank account. Um, whereas with this solution, you don't need a Venmo account. There wouldn't be any confusion or concern about the, the, the user agreement and the use case there. It's, it's actually streamlined um, all through a single processor, that being GiveButter. Because we also accept Apple Pay, Google Pay, Venmo, PayPal, credit cards. <laughs> And all then right, all right, one all of those right. that we, we streamlined <laughs> into a, a single payout. It's, it's a dream um, solution. We all get it. <laughs> but, but Max, so, I mean, just to be specific, um, the, the donor gives through their account. The recipient yeah. is technically give butter, right? And then you, pat, you transfer the funds on to the recipient. Yep. You basically kick over to Venmo. It says authorize uh, give butter to charge your Venmo account. It kicks you back. Uh, to it and it says your Venmo account has been linked and then you can complete your donation. With Venmo, we don't get a lot of information the same way if you did a peer-to-peer -peer Venmo transaction, you would just basically have their handle. Um, whereas with GiveButter, we can ask for any information that you want, their name, phone, email, but also any custom fields. And then I know I, know I don't want to uh, oversell. <laughs> I really want to provide information, but I do think this is important. Um, with GiveButter, you can actually do recurring donations with Venmo. So you can actually, we can save that information. And then if they do a monthly donation, we can continue to charge that Venmo account over time. Um, so that, that yeah. processing for the advancement services folks listening in, that processing is happening within GiveButter, right? You guys are right. processing monthly right. transactions. Um, right. So I don't, I don't want you to be late for the uh, bachelor party, and um, but, th but this is very helpful. And for anybody who hasn't been too familiar with Give Butter, I, Max has some very good friends. Lynn Wester uh, is a big fan who I respect a lot. Um, JD Beebe at Thank You, I think, is also in partnership a little bit with you guys. Um, and, you know, who knows when Venmo might change their mind about a lot of this stuff. But for the moment, it really seems like you guys are in a, a, a very unique place, aren't you, Max? Yeah, it's, I mean, I, I think mission wise, like, I hope that they open it up more. I think that they could be doing so much more with Venmo. It's such, it's so ubiquitous, especially amongst younger generations. So I actually hope that they open it up more and I think they have an opportunity to do so, but it's been three years of this and it's, it's, it's been like that highlighted section that you had in the earlier part about the, like that's been there without changing. I don't know if the article's even been updated. <laughs> I, I, yeah. I read it and I was like, I feel like I've seen that 20 so, times so over the years. Let me, um, let me interrupt Bob and, and Max. There's a number, a number of our participants have information overload, um, confused by all of the platforms that we have been talking about. So can we just make, take a step back and talk a little bit about some of that, the, the long list, Max, that you came up with? Oh, so like Stripe and uh, quick yeah, all of and... that, all of that. I mean, we're we are obviously focusing on Venmo, but we've raised 
a number of other in this conversation. I think that's what's confusing people. Well, I don't know what we answer right here at the moment, John, but I don't think we want to walk through what. No, 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 no. I, I think can we provide just a, a, a simple response by saying these are all different ways people can move money around and you may or may not be set up to accept it. Don't worry about it. Max, I'll give you one more opportunity to run down the list of alternate payment op options that you integrate with. Sure. Um, <laughs> so there's, I mean, my, my favorite, I know we're talking about Venmo here, but my favorite is actually Apple Pay. Um, it's so fast. You can, if you're on your phone, you scan your face or touch ID and, and it, it'll, Apple Pay will actually collect the email address um, and phone if you have it saved. So it can actually be like a five second checkout process. It's so fast. Um, Venmo does have that extra step and you would have to enter your information. Um, so Apple Pay, Venmo, Google Pay as well, uh, and PayPal. We kind of call all of those things digital wallets. Um, yeah. Collectively on GiveButter, we see about 35 to 40% give with a digital wallet, um, which is, I think, really, like, I saw a really interesting comment about um, there's a study that that decreases giving. I haven't seen that. I'm definitely going <laughs> to check that out, offering multiple payment methods. In our experience, we're seeing 40, 40, 35 to 40% of people giving with an alternative payment method. And then we do accept credit cards. What we do is we work with Stripe and Braintree. We do that. We have that relationship. Um, can, you, can you mention, can you explain what Stripe is for those who sure. haven't heard it before? John means himself specifically. <laughs> uh, <laughs> so Stripe is a lot like, I don't want to put more names in there, but PayPal and Braintree where they are a developer friendly uh, payment processing tool. Um, they do fraud detection, they have relationships with all the major credit card and debit companies. Um, and they make it so platforms like ours, but also any nonprofit could easily accept payments online um, and withdraw that funding to their bank account. And they offer a lot of services in between. Um, so it's one of those, it's like, you don't need to know too much about them. They're, they're more underlying architecture that pr help you um, uh, process those payments. And they, they enable us to sound good when saying, oh, we have, offer Apple Pay and Google Pay. Like we don't, we don't work directly with Apple. Stripe works with Apple and Google Pay to, to make those things possible. So it's like, it's important, but it's also with GiveButter, we kind of abstract. So I think, I think we, I, I just wanted to make sure that people out here understand that these are just different payment mechanisms, processing systems. You happen, Max, through GiveButter, be able to handle all of these, but our conversation today is on Venmo. Yep, that's right. That's yeah, right. Max, yeah. Max, Max, that's Max and I, Max and I understood that, John. Um, I understand. Max, do you mean to tell me that uh, that now that you really enjoy Apple Pay, it, now that I've finally gotten around to discussing Venmo, it, it's becoming outdated? <laughs> no, no, I don't think so. Um, but we could. I mean, it would be interesting to go more in deep on that uh, as well. I mean, <laughs> I, I kind of put them together. I, I can also tell you that it's about. Actually, PayPal is the lion's share. It's about 20 to 15%. And then the other half is Apple Pay, Google Pay, Venmo are kind of lumped together yeah. in terms of what we're seeing uh, people pay with. Um, but it's definitely, I think, a rising star in, in, in payment options um, yeah, right. for sure. Well, um, Max, thank you for this. I'll, I'll let you get to the party. Uh, if you haven't <laughs> already, would you put into chat how people could reach you if they yeah. want to learn more about uh, Give Butter and again, uh, you know, who knows how long this could be the situation, but you really seem to be in a nice place at the moment it, for it, people it, that, it, that just want before to turn we let Max, Before we let Max run off though, um, and this is obviously much more from the, op the operations or advancement services um, uh, world, Max, as a, as a third party, um, when, when, when I, as the nonprofit organization, receives money, who is the legal donor? Is Give Butter the legal donor, or are you serving as a legal agent on behalf of the individual? <laughs> yeah, I, it's, in general, we, we kind of, we're, we're a little bit, um, like, similar to how you presented in the beginning, we don't provide legal advice. You should consult your attorney on any given case, because everyone is different, every organization is different, so we can't kind of make generalizations like that. Um, but in general, we allow organizations to add their tax pertinent information in their, in their receiving, uh, in their acknowledgements, um, where a pass through. So that money, we don't, we don't invest that money. We don't touch that money. It's, it's effectively an escrow until you withdraw it. Um, and we can automate those payouts as well. So they're just deposited daily, uh, directly to a bank account. Um, but 
yeah, legally it's, it's, it's something that we're similar to, you know, you need to consult an attorney to, to figure out your individual uh, situation. Right. I think, you know, we, we in the advancement services world always make sure of two things, whose record to put the gift on and who to send a receipt to. So if we were talking about a donor advised fund scenario, like a benevity, uh, mm -hmm. who is a pass-through, but Benevity is also a nonprofit, and they're issuing receipts. The legal donor, when the money comes to me, is Benevity. In your case, you are not issuing the tax receipts. You're serving as that pass-through agent. Mm -hmm. Correct? Yeah, I, I think so. I don't know if I understand the nuance enough. Um, John, I'm sorry, but um, <laughs> no, I'd he's be happy like, to... He's I apologize, Max. He's like that. No, no, no. It's 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 good, and I know it's an important question. Um, I think I might, you know, we we do issue receipts. It's it's almost like on on your behalf how you define that and how that makes sense um, to to an individual organization. We also integrate with a lot of CRMs like Bloomerang um, that will folks will do that acknowledgement process through their CRM um, from their email provider from there, and it's 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 very um, and again and again every organization is a little bit different in how they handle that. Um, I don't think it's, it makes as much sense to say legally for us. We don't like, that's not revenue for give butter. Like we don't report that as revenue. That's not I understand. a, again, yeah. it's, it's really a matter of what is the relationship between give butter and the nonprofit organization. You are not a, you are not a nonprofit organization. Therefore you cannot extend a receipt for a tax deductible gift to the individual. That needs to come from the actual nonprofit, correct? Yes. That's, yep, that's right. That's that's the important thing for the people from my world that are on on this call. Yeah, I, I understand. Stop we're laughing, not a Bob. Stop laughing. No, yeah, we're not a donor advised fund. We don't we don't issue like a catch all receipt that then gets granted out or anything like that. Um, it's definitely the intent is it's going to the organization that comes from the nonprofit. Um, right. Yep. Max, have fun at the party. Thanks, Bob. Thanks, John. I appreciate thanks for, you thanks for doing this. We'll be back yeah, in touch. My pleasure. Thanks, Max. Definitely. <laughs> About our fee. Okay. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, nice of Max to, to do that. And again, I'm, uh, if we've piqued your curiosity, that's okay with me. Um, but ask, I'm sure Matt, Max will be happy to organize uh, a demonstration at your convenience. Um, okay. The last two, John, are going to be the most intriguing. And we actually yes. have the most to talk about from an uh, institutional examples point of view. Uh, I want to make the distinction, because I discovered this, this, this distinction, that there's a, there's a page on the Venmo website that specifically says, if you can follow my pointer, that you uh, require pre-approval for collecting donations as a charity or nonprofit organization. So to me, John, that's kind of a good news, bad news thing, that apparently you can get approval to use Venmo for fundraising. The bad news, I guess, is that they've specifically required approval. If anybody listening in has gotten official approval from Venmo to do fundraising, and there was a guy on Fundlist uh, three or four years ago, I think he was at Skidmore College, that while we were all debating whether or not you could use Venmo, he actually got in touch with Venmo, and I think officially got approval for Skidmore to use Venmo for a senior gift uh, appeal. So. Um, so Bob, the, the, so let's two things, and we do have somebody out here that's gotten the approval. First of all, we're talking <laughs> about, we're not talking about getting approval from Venmo to create a Venmo account in the name of a nonprofit. That's something right. you cannot do. But we are talking about the requirement that if you want to use Venmo to fundraise, then you need to get approval. And we do have somebody, our friends at Florida International University, uh, Paul, who's on the call, uh, has indicated that they did do, go through that process to get that permission. Um, Paul, if you're listening in, I'd love it if you want to say a few words about that. If you turn on your microphone, um, I, I, I've been searching for you. Uh, are you there? I think so. Do you want to get my <laughs> you picture? Are. Yeah, you're coming through loud and clear. Hey guys. Thanks yeah. for raising your hand. Will you tell us about that experience? Because I think, I think when we're done sure. with this session, most people are going to wish that they're, you know, following all the right rules. Tell us what you did. Um, so it actually goes back to your uh, part where there's that beta test group, right? Uh, um, 
a comment there and they had a contact information on there for submitting uh, more information. We weren't part of the beta, we were after it, so it was closed. I just emailed them and asked, what can we do? Can we get into it? <laughs> yes or no? They said, no, we're not going to accept anyone new into it. I go, can we use an account on Venmo to actually start fundraising for the university if we manage everything on our side? And they said, yes, you're more than welcome to um, start an <laughs> well, account, create it and tell us the name and move on. That's, that's all well, we had to do. Well, um, I feel then we got I, stuck in our advancement services shop and the accounting <laughs> side on the university. So we got so clubs, but... So there's an iron, there's an irony here, John, that the guy the guy actually got permission from Venmo and his advancement services office shut it down. <laughs> no, it's, I, I don't want to give my advancement services team yeah, the wrong no, that's it, to, it, it technically ended up being somewhere in accounting. I'm seeing the chat messages saying, "Thank you for asking these questions, John." So it, the annual giving guy gets it. I understand, <laughs> but it is, but it is kind of funny that at the end of the day, it's there's a good fundraising lesson, right? The guy just asked. That's right, <laughs> just asked. <laughs> and that's the story that I heard from Skidmore. So um, remember this slide. That and remember, there's the email address right there. That if uh, if you're if you're doing things sort of on the the sly, um, maybe it's not all that complicated to just get some thumbs well, up. Well, it doesn't even have itself. to be sly. It can be <laughs> above board. Just say, this is what we want to do. Yeah. So, um, um, Paul, thank you for sharing that. Thanks, That's, Paul. Uh, you're, the, you're, the, uh, you're the holy grail for me in this conversation about uh, somebody who actually got the green light from Venmo. Uh, but we could just end this session right now, except I've got a lot <laughs> of other uh, things to walk through. Okay. Here's some things that John and I have learned uh, just in the last couple of weeks since we agreed to have this chat. Um, I'm going to single out Chandler Thompson at Elon University for being uh, really very comprehensive in uh, talking about how Elon has sort of stitched together how this works for them. Uh, and I'll show you some of their data uh, in a minute. And I'll give you her email address, too, if you want to get in touch with her. Um, she's getting married next month, or she's supposed to be. And it's Elon's end of the fiscal year, like it is for a lot of the rest of us. So she, she had a very nice chat with me and John earlier in the week, but begged out of uh, being part of this session, but gave us plenty of information that John and I want to walk you through. Okay, so again, hypothetically, this is not legal advice. I, I forgot this is one of your favorite disclaimers, isn't it, John? It's, I'm not, not a lawyer. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Don't want to be a lawyer, um, never have been a lawyer. So if you want to pursue this, and again, this is the scenario where you would get, like Paul did, um, permission from Venmo to do this, right? Um, but the account holder needs to be a person, so it can't be an entity. Um, and each person can only have one Venmo account. So you kind of have to find somebody who didn't want a Venmo account for their own personal use. Um, you need, also need a cell phone number that sort of verifies the account holder. Um, and so you well, get and that's some... how they get you. When you provide the cell number, they'll tell you, well, you've already used that cell phone for a Venmo account. You can't have another. Yeah. Um, where this uh, then starts to get interesting, you can connect the Venmo account to any bank account, and it doesn't have to be an in the individual's bank account. So some of the examples we're going to look at, it's an individual Venmo account, but it connects to a university bank account. Um, and uh, you can name the Venmo payment name anything you want to. So just some of the ones here, at Elon Giving, at Whittier College, at that's Claremont McKenna Annual Fund. Um, so uh, the individual account constraints aren't as bad as John and I sort of feared they might be. John, anything you want to add to that? No. <laughs> Next time we'll rehearse. Um, and then you, what I think I figured out too is that you can set up any email address, including an institutional email address, that Venmo will send notice of any transactions that are any gifts that are made uh, through that account. Um, uh, so those are just some general uh, individual account rules on Venmo. Okay, let's talk. Oops, let me go back. Let me talk about what Elon let, let did. Me, let, me inter let me interrupt because there are some questions and I think there, there, we need to clarify. There's a, why, why does it have to be an individual? Because Venmo still insists this is a peer-to-peer -peer, uh, fund transfer service. And, and if you don't want to be the individual, you can go through some of those other things that we talked about. So, and we'll, and we can talk about some of the, the non-above board, and maybe that's the wrong term, 
but but yeah. uh, it is technically possible, and we know of institutions that have done this to create a fictitious account um, that's actually owned, quote unquote, by the nonprofit organization. But that is a violation of the Venmo rules. The Venmo rule says that the account must be an individual's account, not the bank account, which is what Bob was talking about earlier. You can link your Venmo account to any kind of account, like in the case of Elon, their, their own Elon checking account, but the Venmo account per Venmo has to be owned by an individual. Yeah. So, um, so this screen that you're looking at was kind of all the information we gleaned from talking to Chandler at Elon earlier this week. And so to me, this is an elegant acceptance of what, uh, what Venmo's constraints were, putting aside, you know, what Venmo's policies are about this. I mean, I think John Elon in this position could just send the email that Paul did saying, is it okay if we do this? And I don't know that there's anything questionable. No, there, there isn't. And, but I think the, the, the one thing that, and from my, 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 my nitpicky advancement services, advancement operations perspective, the other thing that we don't talk about here, which is very important, I think, before we go off and do this, is that you've got to get, the, you've got to get internal permission to do this, which Elon has done by talking to their CFO, maybe the gift acceptance committee or whatever, this is not something that you in advancement services want to just go out and do. <laughs> well, and Chandler made that point that Elon, you know, satisfied every, the legal That's folks, exactly the, right. the auditor and everybody. And so I'm going to oversimplify this, John, fill in any gaps if I need to. So the account holder for the Venmo at Elon is the director of advancement services by Venmo's guidelines, that's the only Venmo account he has. He can't have a Venmo account now for personal use, but he's using his personal space to be the Venmo account for the fundraising Elon is doing. Um, like we said, that the money that comes in through that Venmo account goes straight into an Elon bank account that Elon has identified for gifts to flow into. Um, Chandler also made the point, didn't she, John, that they have put some real restraints on that account. It's essentially a for deposit only. For deposit account. only. That's correct. So they don't have to, that satisfied uh, the auditor a little bit, I think, that they didn't have to worry about who was just deciding to make withdrawals from the account uh, without, you know, full uh, checks and balances on that system, right? Um, then, like we said, you can make that account name in Venmo, anything you want. So it became not surprisingly uh, at Elon giving. Um, I, ha I have a screen cap of the email alerts that Elon receives to a mailbox that they set up in the individual account. The minute a gift transaction comes into that mailbox, it automatically bounces out on an internal listserv. So Chandler, the fundraiser gets it, the advancement services guy gets it, the gift processors get it. So there's, you know, from the minute they get notified of the gift, there's already multiple people that know the gift has been re received. And I think that probably helps soothe the concerns about who's holed up in their office, you know, managing uh, what we're doing with Venmo. Uh, John, anything I left out there? No, I, 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 th I think the one thing that we, what we talked about with Chandler is that um, I, as an individual, when I use Venmo, I, I receive both text notification and email notification when money has been given to me. And I was worried about, you know, the, you, you do need the, the email, the cell phone number to set up the account. And I, sh I would be very worried about all of these text messages coming to that, that cell phone number. And I did confirm during our conversation with you can turn off the text feature and just yeah. get the email that Bob was talking about. So don't let that freak you out. And am I right, John? It, it can be essentially any email too in Elon. That is EDU, correct. You know? and, and I, I, I don't remember if Chandler said this, but one of my other colleagues who have gone through a similar process as Elon 
has set up their, their, their internal advancement services email address for this. So yeah. it goes into a general mailbox so that most people uh, within advancement services can see it rather than having multiple email addresses. So like give at or whatever it happens to be. Okay, so for everybody who's been waiting in this conversation for data, um, here is uh, finally some data. This has been Elon's experience since they instituted uh, Venmo. And as you can see, there's some pretty robust uh, gift totals there. Um, I, think, I think we have this on a later slide. Elon added a half a percentage point to its alumni participation just by offering Venmo as a, a giving option. And I know the question is going to come, I think it, it already has, um, about how do you know exactly who the donor is? So you can see the name of the donor because that's on the Venmo account, right, John? That's correct. So the trick, and, you know, is how we, you match We talked to Chandler about this, this, this exact same thing, and they do, she did acknowledge that there occasionally will be somebody that's not on their database, they can't figure it out. Bob, do you remember the rough uh, statistics she gave? I think it was something like one out of a hundred people, something like that, that they, well, they hadn't yeah. spent some time researching? When I have that bullet point here, it was one period, and it was actually a sort of a trick question because it was somebody who wasn't even on their database, whose uh, boyfriend or, some, or something went to uh, Elon and wanted to make a gift. I, I forget what the giving motivation was, but um, you know, Elon. It, it's we should say this: Elon is a fairly small institution, um, maybe twenty-five thousand alumni, if that. And so, you know, other places probably have bigger challenges learning who the exact donor is. I'll show you how some other places have gotten at that when we look at some examples. But, um, but, but you know, size matters probably a little bit in this situation and trying to understand who the exact donor is. I think one solution to this is, is to use it with sort of segmentable audiences. So if it's a senior giving uh, strategy that's, you know, promoted at one time of the year to seniors, that's probably an easier match than just doing something to everybody on the giving day. Um, but pretty impressive numbers and yeah, they and, certainly and Bob, are so happy. This, this is probably a good place to ask this question um, because we did, we talked about it with Chandler as well. Where do, does all the money go to a single fund at Elon? And the answer is really it depends. Um, because when, when just like, you or I, when we make a payment by way of Venmo, you can type in text that specifies what the gift is for. But typically, I think in Chandler's case, Venmo acquisitions were coming as a result of a specific appeal uh, yeah. to a particular fund. Well, and they did some clever things with emojis too that we'll talk about in a minute, but you're right. So I put up this picture of how they specifically used it for graduates of the last decade fundraising strategy. Um, this was, I think, just in this current fiscal year. Um, and you can see some of those robust numbers too, including how many uh, new donors, um, how many new donors in the current year because they offered that ability to make that gift. Um, and you can see the half percentage point participation bump. And that's just for this challenge. So the, if you add in all of their gifts, um, that's probably even bigger than that. Uh, what else do I have here? Here's some of their artwork. Um, the QR code takes you to uh, the Venmo giving page, I think pre-populated with the Elon giving uh, title. You can see the reference to a video there. I think I have this queued up if I can get this to run. They actually sent out instructions about how to make your gift uh, through Venmo. So there it is, Elon giving. Look, uh, there's the look up. There's you type in your gift amount, $5 there. Uh, go Phoenix. Uh, very fun. Um, and there's your gift. It's finished. Um, so, uh, and Elon has done a whole lot of collateral design of stuff. So here's the, the email confirmation, John, that we were talking about. You notice, right. Um, you notice right here, if you can see my pointer, that's the email coming from Venmo that comes to a gift records generic uh, mailbox, right? And right. then the minute, it, the minute it comes in, notice that it goes back out through this listserv up here at the top of the page um, to everybody who's on the distribution list for that listserv. So Chandler gets the notification, the advancement services folks. Um, 
while we're waiting, um, the one question that I responded to, and I'll just reiterate, um, is that while the, the Venmo account is going to be in the name of an individual and will have a, a cell phone attached to it, the bank account can and should be in the name of the nonprofit organization. And so this is where we're going to want to make sure that we get our CFO on board. So the, the key here then is your bank account, your nonprofit organization's bank account needs to be linked to this Venmo account that you create. That's where you're going to need to get your CFO involved. My recommendation is that you don't uh, link it to the institution's primary bank account which is not what Elon did, but establish a separate for deposit only account as Chandler had explained to us to receive these contributions. Uh, what you do not want to do is let somebody go rogue and use their Venmo account and their own personal checking account and have the money go into that personal checking account and then they gather the information from the individuals that made the gift and then write a check or transfer it to the nonprofit organization. Uh, that you're going to run into uh, some rather significant internal audit control issues and concerns. Um, here's some other samples from other places. So this is uh, Poly Prep, which is a school in Brooklyn, New York. Notice they've got Venmo right down there at the bottom of their uh, giving form. Um, I've got uh, Whittier College. They do a big public give giving day every year. To some of the questions about how do we find the people that we're talking about on the database, um, remember that Venmo has a comment uh, field that you can use for any number of things. And so Whittier here is saying in italics there, tell us where you want your gift to, what your affiliation is, what class year. Well, and, uh, and, 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 and this goes back to the question that was asked, you know, does the money have to go into one fund? And the answer is no. Usually you're going to do it through a, a, a kind of appeal, but if you want to, you know, put it into the John Taylor Scholarship Fund, all you have to do is put it in there. The other thing too that I di we didn't talk about is that if somebody fails to provide that information, you're not limited to just what the profile name is, which could be Kitty Cat, you know, one two three. Um, you now have their Venmo uh, address. And you can send a note back saying, thank you very much for your gift. Who are you? <laughs> kind of, well, it's kind of like the double, the double yeah. opt-in that we were talking about several years ago with texting. <clears throat> it's only the people that refuse to respond to you that you won't be able to figure out who they were. Yeah, so um, that's what Whittier's got. Um, this is Claremont McKenna. Um, there's their uh, individual account address there. Notice they say, put in the comments, section, what your class year and alumni fund. Um, they have to ask this because they're now using it for senior gifts and uh, for reunions and all kinds of uh, different ways. Um, this is actually their um, propaganda, I guess, for the senior gift program. And notice there's the uh, Venmo address with the link right down there at the bottom of the page. And same kind of instructions. Note that your gift is for the senior class uh, campaign and uh, that you're in the class of 2019. I've mentioned emojis uh, as one of the hacks, I guess, that I've seen places using. This is back at our friends at Elon, and maybe this is just getting too cute, but I like the idea. Uh, save space in the comment form, right? But they've given you a, a grid of uh, any designation you might want to give to is no longer, John, a checkbox. It's the emoji that you put. Emoji. <laughs> so I kind of, that's emoji. Yeah, kind of an elegant idea. You know, the, the emojis in, uh, um, uh, that you can use actually match up pretty well with gift, gift designation options. That's right. So maybe that's why they were invented. Who knows? <laughs> um, John, you had brought up Zelle, and I guess I wanted to just have an overarching discussion, kind of like what we got into with Max, about whether, uh, in a way, advancement services folks ought to be uh, increasingly seen in some ways as alternative payment specialists. Uh, anything you want to say about Zelle or anything else we didn't touch on with Max? No, I mean, and, and, and I think this, this came up in the chat earlier. People were confused about all these different payment options, and 
they have a right to be because it seems that there's a new one every day. Um, I didn't know about Zell until a month or so ago. Um, and, and, and Zell, Zell is different um, in that uh, you, you basically receive an email saying you've got and then you just set it up and, and you get it. Zell is not, you, Zell is financial institution based as opposed to Venmo, which is its own entity, if you will. Uh, and not all banks offer Zelle as a payment mechanism, but if you have a mobile app for your bank, you may find that you can make a gift to Zelle. And Duke University, NC State, where I worked, um, you know, they don't have to have a Zelle account. Again, you'll get an email notification saying you've got Zelle money. Um, here's how you go about it and get it. I think. Bob, you and I were talking, and, and I do I do get a bad rap sometimes, <laughs> and 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 rightfully so for being a naysayer. But I, I I have always believed that if a donor wants to make a gift through some new way, like Bitcoin, remember our conversations about those. We should definitely take a look at it. If it's not gonna if if it can be done legally, and and in accordance with our accounting people, and in fact, Bob, you didn't see this, but one one person was asking about PCI compliance issues with Venmo. Well, there aren't any because you're not getting credit card information. Now, now it's my phone. <laughs> this person um, said this the, chat was the, doomed. The, the, the we we oh, it's it's IBM calling me. I don't know why. But, um, we should be in a position to evaluate and implement the receipt of contributions through any payment mechanism that's not going to cost us a, a lot of time, energy, or effort. Well, and I was actually going to lob you a softball question related to that, that for, you know, for, for every advancement services person who probably worries that some of these methods are going to be here today, gone tomorrow, and so is appropriately sort of, um, you know, taking a wait and see attitude versus how donor centric we're all trying to be with any way that anybody wants to make a gift. I mean, what any reasonable thought process for where you land in between those two? Well, no, I don't. I mean, somebody did raise in, in, in the chat earlier, somebody did raise uh, uh, the reference to a study. And I think actually Matt, Max mentioned this as well, that, that, that there have been studies that would suggest that the more payment options you give people, the less likely they will be to, they will be to give. Yeah. Um, and it's, <laughs> it's like the deer in head, headlight syndrome where uh, I don't know what I want to do, how I'm going to do it. I mean, you do want to be thoughtful. It's actually the conversation that we had at NC State, not about payment options, but how many online on the online donation form, how many gift funds do we want to let people choose from? That if they could do a drop down and select any one of the 6,000 accounts that we had, we may lose a donor. So that's why we implemented a protocol where we, we every year put a set number of funds to choose from. Well, that's the same thing to think about here. I wouldn't worry too much about here today, gone tomorrow although some you want to do some research on. Again, if your internal CIO, CFO, everybody's fine with it, and it's not going to create a lot of uh, work on, on the advancement services team, then why not? Yeah, and, um, you know, John, I think, uh, I'm not sure if we've made this exact point, but remember, I don't think we're offering these to convert $100 donors to $10 donors either, right? Um, and uh, I think the way that Elon and some other places have selectively, you know, used it with students, used it with recent graduates, um, you know, I, I, uh, I think there's some argument to be made for the wisdom of that. You know, <laughs> you're, you're right. And, you know, we, and do keep in mind that these alternate payment mechanisms uh, do have dollar limits. Um, so you're not going to be cultivating your $50,000 major gift owner to make a gift by way of Venmo. I think, I think there's like a $500 limit. Uh, uh, no, that's not correct. But there are limits uh, yeah. to how much you can Venmo. I wanted to make this point. I don't know if you can see my Google slide here. Uh, I, I went and 
I went and Googled all these phrases. And I, um, again, the, the revelation for me in this is that it seems relatively easy just to get in touch with Venmo and ask if we can use it for, um, you know, alumni fundraising or whatever. Um, I want to make the distinction between what's Google policy and what's illegal. That, you know, Google is saying these are our rules. And, and then they say at some point, we may choose to, um, you know, cancel your Venmo account um, and also, I guess, reserve the right to prosecute uh, you at some point if you're in grave violation of our rules. Venmo has bigger fish to fry than what we're doing, right? And right. so, again, that's not to excuse our requirement to follow their rules. But I have yet, you know, I Googled all these things. I haven't found any fundraiser in prison because of their uh, their Venmo um, violations. And um, I think the thing that would most likely happen if anything happened would be um, that somebody gets their Venmo account canceled. Now, again, the thing that I learned today is that it really doesn't seem that difficult just to be completely on the up and up with Venmo about we're, what we're doing with individual accounts. But, um, but I also think sometimes people uh, can be a little bit of uh, uh, extreme in talking about how this is illegal and can't do that and stuff like that. And maybe right. it's it probably a good time to revisit our legal disclaimer. <laughs> no, no, but, but, and, and, but also, and I do think, Bob, that, that, and there was another conversation in, in a different capacity earlier today. This is also one of the reasons why I am such an advocate for having gift acceptance committees. Um, you know, gift acceptance committees are not there just to say thumbs up or thumbs down for a particular donation, but they're also there to help uh, vet these discussions. Thumbs up or thumbs down, do we want to accept Venmo? Because in the gift acceptance committee, you've got the CFO, the CIO, the attorney, you know, and if they're comfortable with it, then do it. If they're not comfortable with it, then that should tell you that you know you don't want to go do it rogue. Yeah, um, good. Well, um, I answered every question I sought to go find an answer to when we decided to do this. So um, well, and now I think we we have. I did uh, before you were summarily kicked off by your daughter. <laughs> I, I did encourage I did encourage everyone to. Um, uh, to email either one of us if there was a question that we didn't get to. Um, they also wanted to have Chandler's contact information. Um, I, I think, is that on one of your slides? It's on the Elon slide, yeah. Okay, so, good. Um, and we could always send it out as a Well, no, and too. I think somebody did chat uh, back what that is. But if anybody, again, uh, just to reiterate what I said earlier, if we piqued your interest, if you've left with a question that we haven't addressed, then email either one of us and, and we'll make sure that you get the, you know, an answer. I'm not sure it'll be the right answer. Yeah, right, as usual. Um, Remember, what are you talking to? One more reminder about the, the Midwest Meeting of the Minds Conference, April 5th through the 7th. That's uh, midwest-motm.org. Uh, I am also uh, on a committee that I love of folks that are putting together the Carolinas Annual Giving Conference, which is actually the week before. Um, not uh, <laughs> John, John, we should just quit while we're ahead. No, you know, this is probably <laughs> the same IBM call that I was yeah, getting. <laughs> they couldn't reach you. Anyway, a shout out to my Carolina Annual Giving friends. Um, I'm looking forward to spending time uh, with them too. John, always a pleasure, my friend. Bob, we fr you, you, we lost you again, Bob. <laughs> Goodbye. <laughs> quit, what, quick while you're ahead. <laughs>